Hi, I'd like to share some thoughts with you about Git and GitLab for shared development environments with InterSystems Iris. And I'll be upfront, we're going to spend a lot more time on Git than GitLab. My name is Tim Levitt. I'm a development manager in application services at InterSystems. We'll start out with some background on source control in Iris, where we've been in the past 20 years with Studio, what things look like with VS Code now. I'll announce some exciting new Git server-side source control hooks. And we'll also go into some recommendations for change control workflow based on this. Coming out of this, hopefully you'll understand the different modes for working with source control in Iris and have an idea of how to get started with Git in Iris. The key takeaway is source control and change control for code and configuration is critical to mature development and inter-systems platforms. And it's easier than ever to use Git for this. I expect this presentation will be interesting to you if you're part of a development team that is not yet using source control, if you're part of a development team that either you individually or different team members are using both Studio and VS Code and haven't fully moved over to VS Code yet, or if you're already using Git with InterSystems platforms, even if you have the best approach with every developer working in their own local container, there may still be some benefits from this presentation for you. Starting out with some history. With Studio, the standard approach was to have server-side source control. So you edit a file through Studio, and then it's exported to somewhere on the file system. And depending on what you're using for your version control system, there may be additional steps, like checking it out or checking it in. And there are a number of different tools out there for working with this. We have built-in support for Perforce, which we use at InterSystems heavily. We also have partners and different open source initiatives that have provided other alternatives for server-side source control. And some teams have even gone and built their own, which is really a heavy lift, especially if you're just getting started with object script and you need to write this complicated thing to manage your source. With VS Code, we're in a much better place as a baseline. Client-side source control, there, meaning where the files are on the developer's machine, whether the actual Iris instance is there or not. There are many extensions that work with this for different source control providers. But all of the server-side options that have worked with Studio will also still work with VS Code and are particularly effective with the ISFS server-side editing mode. Another distinction is developing locally versus remotely. Ideally, a developer will have everything on their own machine, better yet, in a container. But practically speaking, we do have shared environments, whether it's for testing, for actual production. Sometimes there's complex setup or OS dependency where it's not practical for a developer to have the whole environment on their own machine. There may be sensitive data that a developer doesn't want to carry around on their laptop, but that is needed to really test the application. Or it might just be a matter of convenience. So for my team, for a number of our internal applications at InterSystems, we have shared development environments that anybody with VS Code can connect to and get started contributing without needing to have a whole instance set up, a whole application set up and running on their own laptop. In all of these cases, it's important to consider what the source of truth is for the code that should be running on the server. One good approach is to have a dedicated one namespace local instance for a developer, whether that's a local instance or a namespace on a remote instance and the source of truth for the source code be on that developer's own local file system. Another good approach is to have a remote development environment with the source of truth on that remote file system. And on the file system, there's also some source control going on here, whether it's Git or Perforce or whatever you happen to use. What's bad is to have a remote development environment with multiple developers, each with their own local repo pushing to the same place and expecting everything to keep working. Because then there really isn't any one source of truth, and things are going to break, and people are going to have their code overridden, and it's not good. So this brings us to our new and improved Git extension. This is available soon. At, when you're seeing this, it is available through the InterSystems Package Manager and through the Open Exchange. You can get it by running zpm install git source control. Features include multi user currency control, 
So if multiple developers are working on the same remote environment, uh, they won't be stomping on each other's changes. And attribution for multiple developers, so in the commit history there, you can see who did what. There's a user interface included that's based on another open source project for viewing diffs, staging and committing changes, going through the whole history of the repository, browsing the tree, and much more. There's also push and pull support for working with remote repositories through menus in Studio and VS Code. And there's more to come. This is something we expect will continue evolving through the rest of this year. And some of the features we're thinking about include really simple package manager integration. So when you run a ZPM load from some local Git repo, it'll automatically be tied in. And changes that you make through Studio or VS Code on the server will go back to the right place. And we also have some ideas about building out examples and workflows for change control, which we'll talk about in a bit. So stay tuned. We'll go into a demo now, just looking at this new extension. How do you set it up? How do you use it? Let's talk through steps for initial setup of the Git source control extension. The first thing you want to do is install it from the open exchange. So we'll say CPM install Git source control. This will pull it down from actually the community package registry. The first time you run this install command, it'll ask you to run this class method to configure the extension settings. So I'll go ahead and do that now. The first thing running this method does is it configures the source control.git.extension class as the source control class for the namespace in which the class method is run. In this case, summit 2021. It asks for a path to the Git executable on the server's file system. It asks for a folder that'll serve as the Git repository root. The default is just to use a temp folder that has the namespace name in it, and you can create a new repository there through the menu that I'll show you in a minute. In this case, I'm just going to use a repository that I've already put on my local file system through a Git clone. If you'd like to pull and push against a remote, you'll need to set up a public-private key pair where the private key file is specified here, and the public key is added as a deploy key in your remote. Git, uh, GitHub and GitLab both support this. There's also the option to add a specify, an event handler class, for what happens after you do a Git pull through the extension to pull your updates into the database as well. And the default approach is if it's a package manager enabled project, it'll just run a ZPM load after each git pull. Otherwise, it'll just do an incremental load of all classes, routines, include files, etc. There are also user specific settings around attribution. So I'll say that my username for my Iris level user T Levitt is ISC T Levitt, and there's an email address for that user too. And these settings have been saved. Once you've done that, you'll have some menus available in VS Code or Studio. So, just to demonstrate that, I'm going to create a new folder called Summit in my Summit 2021 namespace. And this is set up using ISFS in VS Code. Create a new file, demo.cls. And I'd like for this to just be a really simple CSP page. We'll just write out a header with hello world. Oh, extends. And I'll save that to the server. So these, this is where the menus come in. If I right click in VS Code and say server source control, there's an option to add the file. And I can see in the output that the file has been exported to the server's file system. There are a few options now. I could immediately commit my changes to this file, or I, because it's cooler, I'll demonstrate our fancy UI for this. So I can see I have summit.demo in the staging area. I'll just say add summit.demo, and we'll commit. And now if I want to push that to the remote, I can go to any file in this namespace, really, and just say push in the menu available through this little icon up here. 
and I can see down in the output here that this is pushed over to main. And if I look at the remote now, I can see summit.demo has been added. So everything we've talked about so far is really focused on the development workflow. Going beyond that to managing other shared environments, not just a development environment, but say staging or test or pre-production, whatever you want to call it, and production. A, a key concept is change control. And this is something that is really important to my team as we're working on production applications at InterSystems and as we're working on production deployments and track care and health share sites around the world. Um, we've built tools internally that are built on Perforce that add some workflow around this. And really what we're looking to do as a team is provide some of those same best practices without the same tooling that we've built for internal use. So some of these key concepts for change control are repeatability, meaning you made the change in one environment, should be able to make it somewhere else. Revertibility, meaning if it breaks, it's easy to go back to the way things were before. And discoverability, meaning you can discover what changes have been made recently, who made them, why. In terms of how the tools we've discussed already help get us there, by automating as much as we can, we help ensure repeatability. Git gets us most of the way there in terms of revertibility. There may be data changes that are outside the scope of just changing files and, and source control, but having a history of changes really gets us most of the way there. Discoverability is a little bit trickier because the change history in a branch does not necessarily equate to the change history in a given environment. So let's think about workflow a little bit for deploying changes to production. Part of our workflow and what I would recommend is having a branch per shared environment. So if you have a stage environment in production, you have a branch for stage, a branch for production. So you'd have a pull request that gets merged into main, unit tests run ideally before that. Once everything's good, maybe you make a bulk release to stage, um, you can see things actually running, see what they look like, and there's some approval process to go to production. I'll note that the git source control extension allows locking down an environment so that code only gets in via git pull. You can't just connect through Studio or VS Code and change things. There's also extensibility through a class you can extend to say what happens after a git pull. So for discoverability, you might run a git tag command or somehow note this has actually been deployed to stage, to production. In terms of how that deployment happens, it could be manual, but we'd want to very heavily automate it so that it's not like moving over individual classes manually or doing a lot of manual data-related steps. Another option might be pulling Git from the target environment, say stage or production. When a change is merged, we pick it up and pull it into the environment. Or a popular option seems to be triggering through GitLab runners. So when a change is committed to a branch, pushing that out to the environment. So let's go into a demo of how deployment looks with the Git source control extension. Now we'll look at GitLab a little bit and maybe the simplest possible workflow for deploying a change. Where we left off, we just added this class to our Summit 2021 namespace. And what we'd like to do now is deploy it in a controlled way to another namespace, say Summit 2021 prod, or another environment, really. So if I pull up some class in here, I can see that through the git source control extension, I've locked this namespace so that classes in this namespace cannot be edited directly through Studio. We will only want to make changes to this namespace through very controlled uh, deployment steps. The way we're going to do that is using GitLab. So as a, as a starting point, I've defined a few environments in GitLab. If I open the dev environment, I can see that page I already added. If I open the prod environment, well, there's nothing there yet because we haven't deployed it. We have a really simple CI workflow that runs to deploy to production or CD workflow. I suppose. If we've committed to the prod branch, then we just 
call into Iris, run a class method. There's OS authentication enabled here that allows that to work straightforwardly. And there's also information about the environment in here, which is just kind of nice. You can see what's what these steps are tied to. So I'll go ahead and I'll create a new merge request going from main to prod. And I, I should mention I've already configured the summit prod namespace to use a, a clone that's tied to the prod branch right now. So I'll go ahead and create a merge request. You can see that the first time I recorded this demo, I didn't actually add the video, so we've added the file and deleted it and added it back in. Waiting for it. Well, I'm just going to refresh the page and it'll probably have figured it out by then. All right, so when I hit merge, the changes were merged, and I can go check out my CI CD jobs. I can see that this one deploy to production is pending. All right, here we go. That ran. So now I can go back to environments and open up. See hello world that has been deployed to the prod environment. And the class has been added. In that namespace as well. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. As some next steps, I'd recommend attending my other session, Advanced Topics in the Intersystems Package Manager, which particularly focuses on some of the CI kind of use cases. By all means, try out the new Git source control package through the Open Exchange or GitHub. I'll be continuing to post on the topic on the developer community through the fall, so if you want to stay tuned, you can follow me there. There's also a good relevant video from Ron Sweeney about GitLab runners for health share deployment that might be of interest to some of you. And feel free to connect with me through email or LinkedIn if you have any further questions. Thanks for tuning in.